The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Game froze. <laughs> what the? Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and in this video, we are going to build a mechanical arcade game. In a previous episode, I made this handheld video game. It's pretty awesome, but I feel I'd like to have something more mechanical, like a mechanical game like pinball was, but smaller and more convenient and just a bit different. And that is what we're going to build in this video. The mechanical game that I want to build is pretty uncommon, at least for me. I've only seen it in movies and I heard that it is common in bars in America, but I've never seen one in real life. So it's about balancing a ball on a stick that you can control with two motors to move it up a board without having the ball fall into holes on the way. So it's a game of skill that involves precise movement of that stick and you do it with two joysticks. So I want to recreate what I've seen in the movies and I hope that it works. I read all the comments on the Element 14 community page and people asked why are you using a full Arduino for most of these projects? The answer is I want people to be able to recreate it pretty easily. But of course, yes, you could do all these projects with just a bare microcontroller. So this time we're developing the project on an Arduino and then we put that over to our own custom hardware that only uses the bare microcontroller. The heart of the project will be an Arduino Uno. That's the most common one that you will find. And at the heart of this board is the 80 mega 328p microprocessor. So we are developing on the Arduino Uno and then migrate that to a bare 80 mega chip that doesn't even have an external clock. So we have the true minimal configuration. The design was done in Fusion 360. That's really convenient so I can have multiple iterations. It took me a few tries to make everything fit. I plan on using two continuous rotation servos, so they are already in the design. And some of the parts I build when I have the pieces assembled and know what will work. All these parts are designed for a printer that has a little bit less than 20 by 20 centimeters print volume, so you can print that on any commonly available 3D printer. The playing field is just a plate with a lot of holes in it, so you have to avoid those. Don't let your ball fall into these. So these are interchangeable and I can make multiple games. So I will gladly do that and theme it around our fellow presenters at Element 14 Presents. Of course, our game needs inputs. I use two joysticks that I found on Element 14 and I want some outputs in form of blinking lights. So I use shift registers to make it easy for me to drive a lot of LEDs and make a little pattern like an attract mode that an arcade would display. That leads me to the code development. I've prototyped the circuit on a breadboard with my Arduino Uno, some shift registers and some bare LEDs and of course the servos. Let's look at the code. This is the code for my mechanical arcade game. We need the servo library of course. We define all these pins. Keep in mind that the pins for the servers have to be BWM capable. Then we make some servo instances, define all the inputs and outputs, attach the servos. And in this loop, we have another loop. And that's this one. So we do a for loop and go from the number zero to 65,535. And that is 16 bit. So that's a 16-bit value and for every value in that number, so we do that that amount of times, we look up which of these inputs is low, so we know which joystick has been activated and move the servo accordingly to our joystick movements. If none of these are used, then 
we shut them off. 90 is the off position for continuous rotation servos. And we shift out the corresponding number. So we do it for zero, we do it for one and up to this high number. And for every value, we check these and shift out that data. That means that the, the numbers from zero to six, 65,535 are counted up in binary on our display. And that is what the shift register does. And to show these numbers after every sequence, we have to always latch it so it's visible again. These delays are just to give the servos time to do their thing and also to make the transition between the numbers even visible. If we add up all of this, it will amount to about half a second. And that is basically all the code. The most important thing is that we flash that correctly. Now that we have the code ready, we migrate it over to the bare chip. And it's not as easy as just flashing the code like you did and pulling out the chip and put that into some custom hardware. You have to take account the new configuration. So let's take a closer look at that. Within the Arduino IDE, all these Arduino boards are defined with the board's text file and other files that go with them. But these bare chips have a different configuration than all the other files. So what you have to do is put a bare minimum configuration into your Arduino IDE. I have put a link where you can download such a configuration on the Element 14 community page for this video. Insert that in your Arduino IDE and then we have to flash this chip in a different way. Hey, how would you like to get free stuff like this? The Element 14 Road Test Program sends you free products in exchange for detailed reviews posted to the community. Head over to element14.com to see past reviews and apply to be a road tester today. I designed the custom hardware for this project in KiCad and sent it off to Isla.net for manufacturing. And when it got back, I quickly started assembling it. I used two SMD parts, the shift registers in this design because I couldn't get hold of through hole versions. So SMD it is. It's not that hard to solder. These parts are still human solderable. So you only have to have a lot of flux and patience. I found an error that I did, so I scrambled up the pinout for the ICSP programming, the in-circuit serial programming header. So that didn't work, but I did a little adapting thing and I'm also able to flash that within my Arduino and transfer the chip after flashing it. So that is what we are going to try next. Don't be as stupid as me, use a socket for your microcontroller I didn't have one in stock and didn't want to wait for it to be delivered. So I soldered the microcontroller right in place. Then I wrecked it. We come to that a little bit later, why that was. And I had to remove it, put the socket in and use another microcontroller. By the way, I killed three of those. This is my ISP programmer. It's a knockoff and it looks pretty damaged. Here's a dramatic reenactment why that is. So it turns out that fake knockoff programmer killed a lot of my chips because it has some internal hardware error or I don't know what. And then I got a proper programmer from Element 14. That's a branded one. It even supports the new TPI programming protocol for the new AT Tinies. And that wasn't expensive at all. So ah, don't waste your time with bad tools. Get proper tools and then your get proper tools, it's worth it. Now to the real programming part. So what you need to do is make that 80 mega 328p work as a standalone unit and use its internal eight megahertz clock. So what you need is the board file for the Arduino IDE. There's a link in the description to the Element 14 community where you can download such a file, import that into your Arduino IDE and that is what you're using to flash. But you are not flashing with USB upload, you're using a programmer. The first thing you have to do is burn the bootloader. 
people will say, no, you don't need the Arduino bootloader if you're flashing with a programmer like an AVR, ISP Mark II or something else. But the crucial thing is you need to set the fuses. And if you're using the Arduino IDE and flash with a programmer, it won't alter the fuses. It will leave them as they are. So if you are burning the bootloader onto the device, that is what sets the fuses. With all that programming mambo jumbo out of the way, we can go on to assembly. Let's print out all of these parts and design some games based on my fellow Element 14 Presents host, at least a few of them, and cut them out with my laser cutter to make things happen a bit more quickly. I also want to experiment around with how I can manufacture such plates and give it different designs and features. And then it's time to play some games. You need to get one of these balls up in there in the upper compartment and you can only use these joysticks to move this little bar up here. If you go too far, it will release the ball. If you go too low, it will also release the ball and they land down here in this compartment. We could use just a blank template and play the game, but that's not very exciting. We want to have a theme. So let's try out these games. Airborne Surfers Chopper Challenge. So your goal is to get the ball again up here and avoid this big gap here. Come on. Ah. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. Ah. <laughs> ah. Before I go completely mad with Urban Surfers Chopper Challenge, I start with Karen's Learning Circle. And this time we're starting in the middle and it doesn't have holes, it has this spiral that is recessed back so we can take that as a guide. But to truly win, we would need to follow it and avoid, and avoid exactly that. See if we can get it. Ah. Also Karen's portrait is a trap. You are not allowed to go there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah. You can make a Let's Play channel just with this game. Now go in, yes! And that is the last game, Dave Darko's Badgerton. It has a lot of blinky LEDs. Of course you have to avoid these holes. Ah, come on. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier from the right. Yes, we're in. And here's a special feature. Because it's a Dave Darko game, of course you can hack it. Because you can just lift your ball past here. And then have some luck. Yes! If you want to try out these games yourself, you can. I will be displaying them at some maker fairs in this year. Check out the Element 14 community page to see when and where. And if you have ideas for stuff that we can build on the show or ideas to improve projects that we have previously built, share them at element14.com forward slash presents. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.